Have you ever wondered how these get made? In this video, we'll talk about the different components that make up a pair of glasses, and then we'll visit a lab to see if they can put a pair of lenses into these frames for us. Hello and welcome, my name is Dr. Steve, I'm an optometrist from Melbourne, Australia, and if you're new to the channel, remember to click the like and the subscribe button to keep your eyes happy and healthy. All right, so frames are generally made from either metal or acetate. Metal frames are made of an alloy called nickel and copper, or they can be made from stainless steel or a premium material called titanium. Titanium frames do cost a little bit more, but are lighter weight and is hypoallergenic. This means that they don't cause a skin reaction over time. In some people, their sweat reacts with nickel inside the alloy frames, causing a red rash on their skin. And if this is happening, you need to change to either titanium frames or acetate. Now, acetates are basically another name for plastic and can be made from nylon or cellulose, which is a sugar found in plants. Whether it's metal or acetate, they both need the same components. A pair of glasses always needs two arms, a frame to hold the lenses, hinges, no support, and lenses. In metal frames, the components are usually bent around a template to whatever shape you want and then put together at the end. All right, so let's take a closer look at each component in the frame. The average arm length is 145 millimeters, but can range from 120 to 180. It's made to balance the glasses on your ears and wrap slightly around your head to keep the glasses in place. If you look very carefully, you can see the metal rod in the middle. This is called the wire core, and it helps keep the arm bent in the shape that you want it to. When we move down, we see the measurements of the glasses. The first number before the box represents the distance between the outside of the lens to the inside. The second number represents the distance between the lenses or where your nose bridge is, and the last number represents how long the arm is. Glasses usually come in one of the two type of hinges. You can either have standard hinges, which stops when you get to 90 degrees, or flexi hinges. These normally cost a little bit more and allow some flex. So there are pros and cons to different type of hinges. The standard hinge tends to last a little bit longer than the flexi hinge. The flexi hinge has a little spring on the inside and sometimes the spring can become loose, causing the arm to fall off. Now, the flexi hinge, however, is a lot more comfortable and is less likely to break if you bend them the wrong way because of the flex. Sometimes with the standard hinge, if you bend them too far, they just snap off. Okay, so now let's take a look at the front of the frame. The front face is an area called the nose pads to hold the glasses up on your nose. The nose pads can be made out of plastic embedded in the frame or a wire holding the plastic or silicon pads at the end. Sometimes the nose pads on a metal frame can cause indentations on the side of your nose, causing pressure sores. If this is happening, I do recommend you visit your nearest optometrist to ask them to change to either a silicon nose pad, if you're not allergic to them, or replace it with an acetate frame. Now, acetate frames have more surface area, distributing the weight, and it's less likely to cause indentations. So next comes the frame itself. This part holds the lens in place and can come in different shapes like round, square, rectangle, octagons, cat eye shapes, or even aviators for sunglasses. But no matter which shape you choose, they all have one thing in common, and that's this little groove here that holds in the lenses. So, we're gonna go visit an optometry practice that has a lab on site and find out more. Let's go. So we're here with Rachel and Sammy, who are optical assistants and are expert in fitting lenses into frames. So Rachel, how do I fit a pair of lenses into these frames? Back in the day, we used to use glass lenses, but these days we use plastic lenses known as Columbia resin. And the reason why we use plastic lenses is because they're easier to cut and they don't shatter on impact. So if I throw the lens, would it break? If I smash the lens on the ground, would it break? Give it a try. All right, so we're going to smash these on the ground and let's take a look and see if it works, uh, if we can smash it. And it's still in one piece. It didn't break. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we found that the lenses don't break after you smash them on the ground because they're really strong plastic. So, Rachel, are all the lenses the same? No. 
Customers can customize their lenses to their needs. Okay, cool. Customers can make their lenses thinner by choosing high index material. They can add blue light filters for computers, anti reflective coatings to help cut out glare when driving, or photochromatic lenses that go dark when you're outside. Once everything's been selected, we then send that off to our specialist lab and then it comes back looking something like this. So how long does it take to get the lenses back in the lab? About 7 to 14 days. Okay. Great, so now Sam is going to show us how to put lenses in our frame and go through the different steps. So the first thing we need to do is get the inner shape of your frame, so we're going to trace it. So that's measuring the inside of the frame. And that helps the machine cut out the, um, the lens in the right shape, doesn't it? Yeah. Great, so that's done. So the next thing we do is we put in your pupillary distance and we do this so that your pupillary distance can align to the center of the lens. Yeah. And that was the um, measurements that we took before at the front, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so time out. I want to talk a little bit about PD. So knowing the PD is very important. It's also known as pupillary distance and it allows you to align the lens to the center of the eye. So after I've placed the lens in the right orientation, I take this piece called a block, which will hold the lens in position when it's cutting. Okay, cool. So how do you put the uh, block onto the lens? So I insert it in here yep. and I press this yellow button, which will help it block. So it's all automated. Percent. Yep. Yeah. Now that the right lens is done, I'll be repeating the same step for the left lens. Okay. Okay, guys, so now we got our lenses ready. All right, so we're gonna cut the lens. This is the most exciting part. Um, we're gonna put it in the machine and see what shape it comes out as, and hopefully it fits our frame. Now that the file is transferred into the cutter, we're gonna cut the lens. So I'm gonna put it in the in the space there. In here. Oh yeah, cool. And check. No, so now it's holding it in place. Yep. Press. Down. I was just measuring the thickness of the lens just to make sure that there's enough um, lens to put in the frame.
Great, so we just finished one lens and we're gonna do the other one, right? Yep. Okay. Okay guys, so we just finished cutting our lenses and now we're going to hope uh, that it fits into this frame. Hey guys, so we put the lenses in the frame and it fit perfectly. Now I've got a new pair of glasses. Thank you so much, Sammy, for putting the lenses in my frame for me. That's all good. Make sure to like and subscribe and keep your eyes happy and healthy and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.